Hi, I'm Joe Dellabrera. And I'm Scott Kurtenbach. This is an informational video on how we use DRT and SRT rope climbing methods for saddle hunting. Before we get started, please hit subscribe. Also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified anytime we upload anything that's saddle hunting related. We're going to be bringing you gear tips, reviews, answering any of your questions on these climbing methods, and also in the future we're going to be sharing our hunts. So you might be asking yourself, what is DRT and SRT? Well, DRT and SRT are two climbing methods that arborists use to ascend trees. Uh, DRT is an acronym for double rope technique, and SRT is the acronym for single rope technique. Uh, one requiring mechanical, which is the SRT, and the other requiring a tied friction hitch, which is a DRT. I myself have been an arborist for the past 30 years, and uh, it's the method that I choose to access my trees as a hunter. We got into saddle hunting a few years ago, and like most other saddle hunters, we were looking for the most light, efficient way to climb trees. Scott being an arborist for 30 years, I asked Scott, I said, hey, why can't we use the same method that you use at work to climb the trees while we're hunting? And a light bulb went off in our head. And we discovered it's a really efficient, effective tool that saddle hunters can use. And we started using it. It's been working out really well for us. Climbing is inherently dangerous. And these videos that we're putting out, they are informational only. And they're not a substitute for qualified instruction and training. So we encourage you to seek out formal training um, and as much information as you can so that you learn how to do these methods properly and safely. And always, always remember, uh, climb on industry standard rated equipment. Uh, that's your ropes, your carabiners, uh, your prusik cords. Um, don't skimp on anything because your life depends on it. So the terrain that we're hunting in and the tree, basically the circumstances of what you're dealing with when you're hunting are going to dictate what's going to be the best method of climbing. And there's no one method that is going to be perfect in every situation. However, we've found that probably 95% of the uh, situations that we deal with, this is our preferred method of climbing. Ideally, what we look for is limbs that are in trees that are 20 to 35 feet above ground. Something that we can get our throw ball over, pull our rope up, and then clip in whether we're going to climb DRT or SRT. But what we found is that this technique will work in most trees uh, where you do have that effective limb at that height. Um, and as long as uh, it's a safe limb, a live limb, um, this, this method will shine in most terrains. These methods especially shine when you use them in conjunction with preset paracord loops. We set preset paracord loops in the post and pre-season when we do our scouting. We select a tree, select a limb, use the throw ball to set your line into the tree. Those days we might do a little bit of scout climbing and we'll leave a permanent preset paracord loop so that we don't have to do the work of using the throw ball on the days that we hunt. You're not going to be able to do that when it's dark. You might not want to do that uh, when you're close to bedding. So when you come back, if you have a preset paracord loop, you can just climb the tree, but we'll get all into all that a little bit later in the video. So now we're going to touch on uh, selecting a tree, limb selection, and how we get our lines up into the tree. This is probably one of the more difficult aspects of the, the rope climbing methods, is getting your line uh, positioned in the tree right where you want it. And, you know, the way you're going to do that is you're going to use a throw ball and a throw line. So Scott is going to show you how to get the line up into the tree. Um, this is something that we want to stress that you want to you want to practice this because if you go in the first time you try to go hunting and you go in there the first time you're going to get frustrated. Give it a little bit of practice just like you do with your bow. You'll get proficient at it and it's going to make things real efficient and, and make your life a lot easier. So I'll let Scott give you, uh, give you a little lesson on how he, how he does it. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to take our, our cube out of our pack. All right. And then we use this cube because it folds up very nicely in our pack. I just want to show you also a little trick here because we're always trying to cut down on noise all the time. So if you were to place your foot in this and open it up, it just cuts down on that whole snapping and making a lot of noise. 
So let's get right to it. All right, now I wanna show you the connection here. So you're not getting held up tying knots all the time. All I do is just, I tie a simple loop in the end of our line and that's fed right through this ring and then just gets wrapped around the ball. And that's your connection. Simple, easy. The same thing when, you, when you're when you ready to pull your, line, your rope up, you can take this right back off the same way. All right, so let's get this in the tree. So when we're getting ready to throw our throw ball, the easiest way I found to, to make that application uh, less painful, let's say, take a bite of line and just feed it right through the eye. It forms a loop. You hang that right over two or three fingers, whatever you're comfortable with. Take the remaining part of the line, same thing, right back over, same. All right, and then that's your, there's your, your arc. So you're getting ready to fire that throw ball. Once you find you located your limb, and remember, we're always trying to, you know, usually hit, you know, our four, a size of our forearm. That's kind of the rule of thumb that we always tend to shoot for. Um, you know, safety is always number one. So we never want to be over something that's uh, one compromised, whether it's half rotted, fully rotted. We always want a live limb the size of your forearm. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb. So we want to take that <coughs> throw ball, just get a little swing going back and forth and then just shoot right for that limb. And that's it, right over. Let's do it again. So if you were to let go too late, you would go up high. If you let go too soon, you'd go down low. And uh, that's where all your practice is gonna come in hand. Get that arc swing and then just fire. And the thing is, you might go over a couple limbs. You know, if you go over two or three limbs, just slowly pull the throw ball back till you get it over your target limb and get it in and get it to drop right over. If you do go over multiple limbs and you find yourself that when you go to pull that throw ball back up and you have a feeling it may get snagged, your best bet is to go over, take that throw ball off, pull your rope through, and then throw back over the limb again. Sometimes if you pull up and you get into a situation where you have a really tight crotch, um, you could get that throw ball stuck and then that's gonna require you, hopefully you have a backup throw ball. <laughs> and then you'd have to use the other end of your line. So what I would do in a situation like that, like I said, I would just come over and I would take my throw ball off. then you're not going to get it snagged. All right, we're ready for rope. All right, so we're going to attach our climbing line to our throw line. So we're going to double this over. Take the end of your rope, feed that through. Let's go down, I don't know, five or six inches. All right, get a good connection there. And then just come up and put like a half hitch loop right on the end. Your end's gonna follow through first. All right, and that'll follow right up, right through the crotch with the least resistance. Come back to your line. That's it, you're ready to go. Hey, one of the nice things about these cubes, what we were talking about before, is it goes in as fast as it deploys. And this is the reason why we use this too. As you see, it didn't knot up. Done. It's back in your pack. Now Scott will demonstrate DRT climbing with his saddle. So now let me show you how we attach our carabiner. Um, a good rule of thumb is, is probably to have about a good five feet of tail length. Is you got to tie 
the knot for your carabiner. You gotta leave your predetermined length on your bridge, depending on, of course, how long your arms are. And then the, the rest is left over to tie your Blake's hitch and your safety knot to back up your Blake's hitch. The, the easiest way that I tie this is just, I do two double overhand. All right, so I do one overhand knot, and then I do a second overhand knot. That's your attachment point for your carabiner. Now another way you can do it, make a loop, one loop, a second loop. Take the second loop behind the first loop, and just take your carabiner and go through both. And just pull them tight. Just dress that knot up nice and tight. Clip into your bridge. So for DRT, you're gonna be using a Blake's hitch. Now, the length, this is your second bridge. This is your first bridge that's on your, bridge is on your saddle. You, this is also considered a bridge too. This ties the, the moving system over to the actual side where you're pulling. Depending on how long your limbs are is gonna depend on how long this is, okay? So may I have fairly long arms. So I'm probably gonna have, you know, a pro I'd say mo probably 16 inches or so of actual bridge, 12 to 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, so let's break down the Blake's hitch here. So we have a line going up over the limb, coming back down. This is your bridge for your Blake's hitch. You wanna keep your finger in line with your main line. Go around your finger twice, two coils around, and two coils above, just around the rope without your finger. Take the line, the tail end, over the bridge, and then you're gonna come around, pull your finger out, come around the back side of the main line, like so, and then follow up through the first two. And then Best way to dress your knot is pull it all the way up, put your hand on the tail end, that's like your break, and just sit into it. That, that shores up the knot, that dresses it. And always, always remember, back any hitch up with a safety knot. You can just throw one half inch knot in there. So just in case, if this ever loosened up, it would never pull through. It would, it would stop right at that safety knot. So this Blake hitch that you tied, this is your means of going up and coming back down safely. What your Blake's hitch actually does is it's a friction style knot, okay? And that is when a load is applied to it, your weight is pulling down on this side of it, okay? And if you have that knot taut, that friction knot hold your weight and it should not slide at all all right if it does slide you may need to dress it properly you may not have it dressed the proper way when you want to come down i tend to keep that tail right between my thumb and my forefinger all right grab that knot and just apply slight pressure and all you got to do is just reverse it and it holds you again so a little bit of slight pressure. That's the nice thing about a Blake. When it's tied properly, a lot of times you don't even have to apply any of the pressure on the tail end. You know, it'll, she'll just lock right up on you. When you do tie this, this, this bridge length in, you've got to always keep in mind, you want it far enough away so that when you're ready to climb, you get a long enough pull but at the same time, you don't want it too far to where it's a problem reaching the knot. So you want to always make sure that that knot, you should always be able to have your hand, your hand or finger should go above that knot. So always kind of keep that as a general rule of thumb. And that's in a seated position. When your weight is into that, you should be able to reach up and your fingers should go above that knot. Then you always know that you know, you're, you're, you're tied at the proper length that you're definitely gonna be in reach of that. If you can't reach that knot, you're gonna be at a little trouble. <laughs> and you have to call your buddy to come get you. Um, I could tie this much shorter, so just keep in mind, if my bridge was this short, okay, 
then that's about how far I'm going up the tree with each pull. That's going to require me, you know, twice as, many twice as many pulls, more time, more effort. Okay, so I want the maximum amount of pull each time I go up that tree. So now I'm going up that tree, I'm getting a good foot, 15, 16 inches of lift every time I pull up that tree. All right, and another key thing too is when you're doing this, you always want to make sure that you have an adjustable bridge on your saddle, okay? Because you want to keep this bridge as short as possible. You want all these working parts right in front of you, okay? If this carabiner was on a long bridge and it was up here, that puts my knot up here, okay? And you just, you don't want to be in that situation. Okay, I'd say we're ready for climbing. We've come to this point, now we're going to get up the tree. So first and foremost, once you're clipped in, your Blake's hitch is tied properly. All right, we're gonna put some slack, uh, put some tension on this. Keep it up tight, sit back into it before you even start pulling yourself up the tree. Now, as you can see, that hitch is holding my weight. I'm 220 pounds, that's holding my weight, no problem. It's not sliding, slipping at all. That's how you always wanna start your climb. Now, when you're ready, you're gonna take your opposite hand as tight to the knot as you can. This hand, you wanna take a wrap, just one wrap. Now you're in ready to pull. I want, I want my legs horizontal, sometimes even a little bit past horizontal, all right? The whole, the whole thing here is it's a timing technique. As I pull down, I wanna thrust my hips forward. So kind of what I'm doing is the inertia of me throwing my hips forward at the same time I pull down, it almost puts me in like a weightless scenario. So I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling 220 pounds up the tree, okay? Because even for me, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just too much work. And like I say, two hands on the rope, one hop up to the knot, take your wrap, okay? Legs parallel or slightly above. Now, as I pull down, all right, I wanna thrust up, okay? See all the slack in that bridge? Because I just pulled myself up a foot to 16 inches. Again, hand to the knot, take a wrap, legs parallel, and then it's just, it's a thrust. And then you would adjust your knot. Now that already put me up a, a foot off the ground. And then you just hold yourself in that position, slide your knot. Come back down. And you can see in this tree too, there's a slight lean out this way. So it's putting me just a little bit out further, but it's still doable. So even if you get into a leaning tree, it's still doable. If you get into a tree that leans excessively and it puts you this far out, you're gonna have a lot more problems now. Because the more you can stay, stay in contact with that tree, the easier it's gonna be for you to ascend it. So once again, two hands on the rope, feet out, thrust. And that's about it. Now some guys will descend, and I think some of you beginners out there should definitely do it this way. Keep the rope in your hand, grab your knot. Now you have two points on the rope. Just remember, slow ascend. 
This isn't a race. You come down too fast, you're going to create a lot of friction in this hitch, and you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the heat in your hand, and also with this rope, if it was sliding through your hand, it will burn. Okay, so you just saw me go up and down on the Blake's hitch, all right, where I had to tend the Blake's by hand. Now I'm going to show you a little trick with this Prusik cord that's going to self-tend the Blake's hitch. You're going to go around twice. You're going to create four loops by going around twice. And you want to leave that loop in there for the tail end. Okay, we're going to take the tail end of our Blake's just come through here, put a double knot in it just to keep it from coming out. Okay, now one of the most important things is I'm pretty taut here. You want to slide your Prusik cord up to make the tail end of the Blake's as taut. So this way when you pull down, you're getting the maximum lift out of this. This is going to tend your Blake's so you don't have to move it by, by manually like you would just a single Blake's. So we're taut here. This is taut here. That's pretty tight. The other thing you want to remember is don't, don't set this too high to where you can't reach it because you're going to need to put a little bit of slack into it in order to come back down. So now we're all set. We're looking good here. So now all you got to do is just hip thrust and pull. And that Prusik cord is going to tend that knot for you. Just pull up, hip thrust and pull. That's it. Reach up, a little bit of slack, and then you just come down on your blakes like you normally would. And that's it, self-tending blake hitch. All right, now we're gonna show you SRT. Uh, I have my line up over a limb in a crotch. Uh, one of the things with uh, SRT, I threw my line up over the limb, but I was having a little bit of trouble hitting the limb that I wanted to hit, but that's one of the beauties of SRT. I can get it over several limbs. I can get it, you know, just as long as I'm in a spot where I'm over limbs that are strong enough or I can get girth hitched around the tree, it'll work just fine. All right, so, so I got my line up over, if you look closely up there, I'm, I'm in a crotch, I'm in a really good, safe, strong crotch, but I'm also over another limb that's probably about the size of my forearm. You know, if this was DRT climbing, it'd be a big pain because you'd be over a bunch of different limbs, really wouldn't work so well. Um, but with SRT, it, it'll work just fine. This is gonna be called a, uh, a, a canopy hitch but I'm gonna do it with what's called an alpine butterfly. Basically, when you're, when you're using a canopy hitch, using an alpine butterfly, you can only climb up one side of the rope. One side will hold you, the other side, if you were on that, it'll just pull back out because it's basically nothing more than a slip knot. Uh, I wanna climb up this side of the rope. So if I wanna climb up this side, the other side is the one that's gonna have my alpine butterfly. And what I like to do, I like to take the end of it, keep it up high, but high enough where I can reach it. And that's gonna give me enough rope to tie in my alpine butterfly, pull it through and, and have my height. I'll show you what I mean. So to tie an alpine, alpine butterfly, you're gonna to wanna to take your hand, take the rope, wrap it around your hand three times, three wraps. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your hand, reach in from the side, and under this last loop, grab the middle and pull this middle, because that's gonna be your loop. Pull it out and then around and through. Now, when an alpine butterfly is tied properly, the way I learned is it should have one side that has two parallel sides and the other side should crisscross. And that's basically gonna be nothing more than a slip knot. Now you're gonna take this end, take your, your rope, 
pull it down through and pull your slip knot up. It's going to girth hit your limb. One side will hold you. This is the side I'm going to climb on. The other side will not. This side, if you pull it, it's just going to pull your loop right back down. And this is how you're going to you know, pull your line back out. So this is a very important thing. If you are somebody that wants to climb up and transition to your tether, you want to always leave your gree gree or whatever type of climbing belay device that you have on the line that you climbed up because if you're up in that tree and you selected the wrong side you're you know only one side is going to keep you safe the other side will not so i would recommend if you're climbing um you pretty much stay on your your climbing line if you're srt climbing this way you never make that mistake okay so i'm using the petzl gree gree plus it's a belay device the way this guy works it opens up kind of like a kind of like a clam but and in here shows a little guy climbing up the rope so this is the rope I want to climb I'm basically gonna lay my my line in here just like the guy climbing up the rope because that's the way I'm climbing wrap my rope around close it up clip onto your bridge. So what this device does is basically, if I, you know, I can kind of, I can move this, as long as there's no pressure in it, I can move it up and down, no problem. Like I can push it down and it'll go down. But if I sit into this, if I sit into this with weight, it'll hold me right where I'm at. Okay, so that's the purpose of this device. And really the whole the way this system works is when I step up and I'm climbing, I'm going to basically be pulling on this end of the rope and pulling that slack as I step up through the device. And then when I sit back down into it, it's going to hold me. So if I were to be climb, climbing right now and I pull slack, sit back down, it'll hold me right where I was before. And that's the whole object of it. So as you're climbing up, it's gonna hold you, but then when I wanna come back down, the way I come back down is it has a brake release here. And what you wanna do is you wanna take your rope, wrap it over. You can kinda of see where you want the rope to go. It has kinda of like a shiny spot here. You kinda of want it like that. You always wanna keep pressure on it. But to come back down, all you have to do, is take the brake release and then you'll feel some pressure. And then as you put pressure on it, it'll loosen up and you'll start to come down. The cool thing about this particular device is it's really good for um, new climbers because it has a panic feature where, you know, logically, if you're, you're on the brake, if you're using the brake release, the more you pull it this way, the faster you descend. But if you were to, if somebody were to panic and go really fast like that, it would actually brake and stop and hold you there. So it's kind of a nice feature. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do with your, uh, for, for this method of SRT climbing is you're gonna use a hand ascender and then a foot loop. Um, the way you open these up is you wanna kinda of push down, move it over like that and it latches. And this device, it has some teeth. This is where it's gonna grab into the, the rope and it's only gonna be able to go one way. So you, you catch it on the rope like that, close it up, and I can't move my, I won't be able to move the ascender down, bites into the rope and holds, but I will be able to move it up easily. So the way we do SRT climbing here this, with this method is we're going to take the other end of the rope that goes through your gree gree, snap it into your micro pulley, and then I want to get this hand ascender up pretty high, you know, but just someplace where I could reach it. And then I'll take my foot loop, adjust it where it's comfortable for me. Sit in, put your foot in the foot loop. You put one hand on your ascender. And then what you really wanna do, you don't wanna take your leg and, and push out. A lot of people tend to do that, but it's not as efficient. You wanna keep your leg underneath you and you're gonna step up. When you step up, this hand on the rope is going to pull the slack over the pulley and through your, 
your uh, gri gri. So it's just like this: up, pull up the slack, and then you just you just keep working your way up the rope. Step up. It's actually pretty fun. It's very easy. It's about as easy as stepping on a stick. You're taking just a step up and pull up the slack. I would take this guy off. You know, the thing with SRT is you got metal, so you're gonna wanna do everything slow. You know, I'd wrap it up. Um, I would have, see I have two lines here, right? I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I probably would have left this on first, but what, when I get to hunting height, I would put, I would already have down at the base of the tree, I'd have my bow on one end of this line, and then on the other end of this line, I'd have my pack. So I would get to hunting height, pull up my pack, you know, set, you know, hang my, my gear hanger, hang my pack up, hang my platform. Um, you know, once I get everything situated in the tree where I want it, I'd pull up my bow, hang up my bow, and then I would pull up my ropes, pull up my ropes, wrap them up, stick everything in my pack and you know put my my gear in my pack i would you know if i'm srt climbing i would either stay on this line it depends um you know it depends on the tree uh maybe a tree like this where i'm at like right here i'd probably just stay on this line because i can easily get all the way around this tree no problem you know to get a strong side shot um but a lot of times me i like to take my tether and use my tether around the tree. Just depends, you know, you could do, you could stay on your climbing line, stay just like this. I could, you know, I could hunt like this, no problem. Um, so to descend with this, um, as you can see here, you can kind of see there's like a little piece of metal there. It's kind of like where you'd want to have your, your line go over. You never want to just kind of like let it go on its own willy nilly. You want to kind of control it in one hand. And you take the brake release over here and then you just you apply pressure on the brake release as you apply pressure it'll release the brake and you'll start to descend nice and easy all right so you know i'm i'm done srt climbing um i want to come back down get my line out of the tree this line here, it's basically the other end of your slip knot. So if I pull on it, I'm gonna pull the line right back out of the tree. So I couldn't climb on this. If I tried to climb on it, it's just, there's nothing holding it to the tree. Um, this side here is, you know, pulling through the slip knot. That's what's gonna girth hitch the tree, and that's the one you climb on. So when you wanna come back out, it's nice and easy. You just pull this one, pull it on down and out. is and then just just a rope just wrap up your rope stick it in your pack and uh <clears throat> we didn't we're not showing this but um like here i i like to carry the 75 feet of rope that's going to get me 30 you know about 35 feet up into a tree if i wanted to go that high um but what some guys do when they're srt climbing is they're figuring they're only gonna be maybe 40 feet or under. So they'll take, you know, about a 40 foot rope with a loop on one end, and then that additional 35 feet of rope, they'll use paracord. And the paracord is a lot lighter, um, it's less bulk. So, you know, now they're carrying, you know, about this much rope, you know, as opposed to 75 feet, and then just some paracord, and they'll tie it to the loop they'll do the same thing, pull it through the canopy hitch. And instead of doing an alpine butterfly like I did, they'll basically leave the paracord on the end of the loop on their, their rope and they'll use that to pull it out. And that works fine as well. 
As far as getting your gear up into the tree, um, one of the nice things about these rope climbing methods is, you know, you're using a rope. So you, you're always going to have, at, depending on what method you use, whether it's DRT or SRT, you're always going to have at least one main line that's coming down to the ground. A lot of times, if you know, you might remember in the past pulling up a pack on paracord. If your pack's kind of heavy, the paracord, you know, it bites into your hand. Using your climbing line, it's always nice and thick, so it's, it's nice and comfortable if you're pulling up a heavy pack. Um, normally what I would do is I'll just, you know, I'll just take my pack, I'll just tie it on here. I carry a, a Doyle's hoist for my bow. I usually just clip that on me, connect that to my bow. I'll climb up, I'll pull up my pack, set myself up in the tree, and then um, when I'm all set up in the tree, last thing I do is pull up my bow. Uh, another thing I've done in the past as well is I'll take another paracord and I'll tie that paracord to my pack. So once I pull my pack up into the tree and that starts coming up, the paracord will, will lead right on down to my bow. I'll set everything up in the tree and then pull my bow up that way. So it's just, it's, it's your own personal preference on how you're going to do it. So uh, now I'm going to climb up into the tree and I'll, sh I'll also show you a little trick for getting multiple items down without having to take trips down and untie them. All right, so when, once you get up to hunting height, everybody's kind of got their own way of doing things, but usually what I'll do is I will, uh, I'll put in a bow hanger or a gear gear hanger first thing. Sometimes you can even carry that on your side if you wanted once you get up the tree and then just pull your pull your pack up with your rope. If you hung up your your gear hanger or your hook in the tree or whatever, hang up your your pack. I take my excess climbing line, I'll wrap it up and stick it in my pack. I don't leave it down because I don't want it to become a scent wick. Um, and the nice thing is, the beauty of this is you can kind of get around the tree, you can go up and down real easy. So it's, it just makes it easy using this kind of a system to kind of work around the tree. To lower a gear item, all I have to do is hold one end, put my gear item on it like this, and then just ease it on down to the ground. Pull my rope back up. Now if I've got another item, say I'm going to want to lower my, my hand ascender instead of dropping it all the way down. Basically going to do the same thing. So I can lower multiple items and not have to make a, a special trip to go down. That makes it nice. And then the beauty of SRT, um, it's the funnest way to come, come out of your tree because, you know, you can kind of pretend you're an army ranger and come on down. That's how you get your gear up and down the tree. Pull your rope out, stick it in your pack, and you go. All right, let's talk about presets. Uh, a preset for us is a, a preset paracord loop that we leave in a tree indefinitely. Uh, it's, we install it by throwing a throw ball over the limb and we pull in the preset paracord loop. We leave it there forever. And when we come back to hunt the spot, we don't have to deal with throwing a throw ball or anything. We could just tie our climbing line to the loop, pull it over the limb and back down and tie in, climb and hunt. Uh, we rely heavily on pre-scouted locations and setting ourselves up uh, for when we come back. Um, you can go into a spot and throw your throw ball and hunt that same day, you could do that, but there's a lot more movement involved. It's, sometimes it could be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to get just the right limb that you want and all that. So we do all of that in the postseason. Uh, for the most part, we really enjoy doing it in the postseason because all the sign is still there. There's no leaves on the trees. Um, it's, it's cool, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about ticks or anything like that, so it's a perfect time to get out there. What we like to do is we'll buy a thousand foot spool of 550 paracord. This spool that I bought is from Paracord Planet. 
8,000 feet is going to get you probably about 17 presets that you'd get out of one 1,000 um, foot spool of paracord. So, you know, if you think about that, if you were using screw in steps like we used to in the past, I mean, that would have cost you hundreds of dollars to have, you know, 17 sets. But this is a real inexpensive way to set yourself up with a lot of different locations that you can come back, easily get your line into the tree and climb right up. With a, with a preset loop, I can be up to hunting height in probably three minutes, four minutes, you know, with either SRT or DRT. So um, we rely very heavily on this. Uh, I would say probably more than 95% of our hunts are done using preset paracord loops. I mean, we, we did this all year long and I probably have, I don't know, I, I must have set at least, at least 30 sets this year. You know, and I mean, sometimes I'll have four or five sets in the same general area, but it's for a different wind, you know. So, if, you know, if I want to hunt that spot and, you know, now I can hunt it on any given wind. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. You, you can't throw a throw ball in the dark. So um, this, this is the way that you need to do if you want to use a, a rope climbing method and come in and hunt in the mornings in the dark, you're going to want to have a preset paracord loop. Um, in the afternoon, I mean, it's just it's just always easier to have a loop no matter what time of day you use it. But uh, you can throw a throw ball in the afternoon, but I just, you know, I don't like throwing throw balls if I can help it. Um, no one does. No one does, yeah. <laughs> throwing a throw ball is the hardest part of this. But setting yourself up in the postseason especially, it, it makes you more efficient. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, do us a favor, please hit subscribe. Uh, also, hit the bell icon and uh, send us a friend request at New York Saddle Hunter Forum on Facebook. Um, this way we can, uh, we can go back and forth with one another. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post them there on our Facebook channel or in the comments section. We're happy to try to make videos, uh, video requests, anything that you guys are having difficulty with or want to know how to do it, we can focus on it. If you have a question, there's probably somebody else that has a question. And uh, we have a lot of fun um, making all this, this material and bringing it to you. Uh, we really appreciate the support. Uh, Joe and I really enjoy bringing this stuff to you as much as I'm sure you guys love doing it. Um, and we just want to thank you once again from the bottom of our hearts, man. Appreciate all the support here. And uh, always remember, go in light, come out of heavy.